Welcome to the world's most popular and reliable news. Starting off the news this week, the SpaceX Dragon 2 capsule we reported on last week safely returned to Earth on Friday. There was particular worry about the safety of the capsule on the descent, but it seems that there was nothing to worry about. Now, Ripley, the dummy inside the capsule wearing the stylish SpaceX spacesuit and bristling with sensors, will be rigorously tested by scientists to make sure that the capsule is properly suited to human use. The first astronauts to be sent to the ISS with the Dragon 2 are expected to be sent up no earlier than July. In other news, evidence has been found of a massive solar eruption hitting Earth in 660 BC from ice in Greenland. A solar flare of this size hitting Earth in the modern day could knock out a huge amount of electronic equipment and will almost certainly disable any satellite it hits. This could in turn disable much modern communication systems, such as the internet. It would also cause a lot of aurora borealis, which is nice, but I'm not quite sure the trade is worth it. Also this week, it's been reported that an expedition by scientists to sub-Antarctic waters of Cape Horn managed to locate and get a tissue sample from the mysterious Type D orca. First discovered through strandings in New Zealand in 1955 and then spotted again in photos taken in 2005, these orca are very distinctive and according to researchers are highly likely to be a new species. Their heads are much more rounded than other orca types, their dorsal fins are narrower and pointier and their white eye patches are very small. Video of these creatures was taken by researchers and they are now waiting on the tissue sample to be analysed to confirm whether or not this is a new species of killer whale. In paleontology news, it seems the famous Cambrian explosion, the period in Earth's history 540 to 520 million years ago when animal diversity increased rapidly, may not actually have been much of an explosion at all. A new study has challenged the idea that the world during the Ediacaran and subsequent Cambrian periods were significantly different from each other, and suggests that the radiation of early multicellular life happened in a series of events beginning in the Ediacaran and continuing into later periods. It therefore also concludes that the Cambrian explosion was just one of these many events, the one in which Cran bilaterians diversified. More ideas are being overturned this week as the argument that non-avian dinosaurs were declining in diversity before the asteroid and volcanism finished them off has been challenged by a new study. Focusing on the North American Maastrichtian record, researchers have found that the evidence for a gradual decline in dinosaurs is actually the product of sampling bias and not representative of what was really occurring at the time. Applying ecological niche modelling, and not just relying on fossil occurrences, has shown that suitable habitats for dinosaurs were not disappearing towards the end of the Cretaceous, but instead staying mostly the same and even becoming more widespread, and they were just in areas that were less likely to preserve fossils. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you. And if you do, we'll see you on Sunday.